Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise. We honor your majesty, Father, for the presence that is all over this place. Those who are feeling Father, that are with us, we pray that your blessing to God will reach out to everybody. As we join in, Father, to worship and to praise, let your presence to God be with us. Take over the service, Father, Lord, we submit everything back unto you. Without your help, we have nothing. Help us, we have this. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So we be seated. Tonight, I've got an assignment of prayer. And I'm asking that we pray through about seven important things that I believe will be of a great help to all of us. And I'm using the character in the Bible to share a few things with you and share a few principles with you as to how we can overcome the adversities and many complications that the enemy throws on our way. And uh, I pray that God will help us. God is not going to use anybody, but he's going to use you. And I want you to understand that the power is upon your life. And if once you are available for the Lord to use you, God will use you. Amen. You are the gatekeeper of whatever happens into your family or around your family. Anything that happens in your home, you are the spiritual gatekeeper. Bible says, you are posted watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem. Listen to me, you are a watchman. Somebody say, I am a watchman. So the Lord has made you a watchman. According to the book of Isaiah 62, God has made you a watchman. And you have become a watchman upon the walls. In the days of old, countries or cities had walls around them, and they would post in between the walls watchmen who stand, so that when any enemy is coming in, you will be able to inform the army that are within. Tonight, God has appointed you, God has really you know, brought you to a place where He's made you a watchman upon anything that is happening around your family. For these 21 days, I invite everybody to join in. And God is going to use you. He's going to, not going to use anybody from anywhere. Nobody is going to pray for you. You are going to pray for yourself. There are a lot of things that we are dealing with. There are certain complications that we are going through. And I pray that God will deal with every difficulty in your life. Praise the name of the living God. So I want you to develop what we call breakthrough mentality. Breakthrough mentality. We, have, we need to have breakthrough mentality. We need to come to a place of bad parasite. The God of the breakthrough, who will dash out with many blessings that he has purpose to bring to us. Hallelujah. I came to let somebody know that you can never be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you can never be defeated. He would try and do a lot of things around you, but God has appointed you as a mighty man of valor. Come on, you are a mighty woman of valor. God has raised you as a man who have been empowered, who have been you know, given everything that he or she needs to be able to stand against every weight that the enemy will bring around you. Number one thing that we're going to pray about is having dominion over problems around you. Praying over dominion of problems. You know, so God must you know, give us power and give us dominion over problems. In the book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19, in the book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19, he says, when the enemies shall come against you like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift a standard against them. Isaiah 59 verse 19, behold the Lord's hand, verse 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the Rising of the sun, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift the standard against him. The enemy will never stop coming in. Listen to me. They shall fear the name of the Lord from the west. They shall fear the name of the Lord from your side. And his glory from the rising of the sun. Early morning, as you are praying in the night and you are rising up, May you rise up with the glory of God. May the hand of the Lord be upon you throughout the night. A lot of things do happen in the night. Powers of darkness do battles in the night. 
In the midnight hour, may the Lord touch you and may the Lord protect your territory. May the Lord be with you. May every prayer that you offer unto God rise up and attract angels that will be around you. Listen to me. You will be so sensitive in such a way that when the Lord touches you to rise up and be a watchman in the night hour, I would say the serpent watch over their flock by night. The serpent watch over their flock by night. May you be so sensitive to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Now, as the enemy comes against you, you shall rise up and fight. Says the Spirit of the Lord shall fight on your behalf. You will lift the standard. May a standard against every power be lifted on your behalf. Oh, they will come against you not by one way. Bible says they will come against you like a flood. Which means they, they are a powerful force. But listen to me. It does not matter. It does not matter. Bible says the Spirit of the Lord shall rise up a standard or lift up a standard on your behalf. Dominion over complications and difficulties. I pray that tonight every complication in your life concerning, you know, you know, childbearing, anything, sickness, anything, business, anything at all, marriage, anything at all that you're going through. I pray that the Holy Spirit will let you know, give you the power that you need to be able to rise over it, to have dominion over it. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. The second thing that we're going to pray about is dominion, having dominion over curses. May the Lord give you power over curses. Dominion of a curse is anything at all that is trying to dominate you by way of a curse. Blasphemous things that have been suffered by your forefathers, things that have been laid down by your forefathers, things that have been done in the past that is having effect on you today. Time sensitive curses. Then we're talking about generational curses. Oh, I pray that God will give you dominion over those curses. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I pray tonight as we pray, may Jehovah give you insight and may the Lord give you power. Anything that is hidden, may the Lord reveal it to you. Throughout these 21 days, listen to me what the Lord can do is to take you in your path. The Lord has done that for me, I mean, in my life before. And many people talk about the fact that God took them in their path, even in their childhood, by way of a dream or a revelation. And God will show them things that is no. About certain things that the enemy laid down. You see, when you see that, that's not the time for you to panic. It's the time for you to rise up. That's the time for you to rise up and pray. Because every time that you have the vision and you are like a child and you've gone back backwards, it means that there were certain things that you need to deal with. Now pray that God will give you insight. God will give you power. God will give you revelation so that any time that you are, you are traced back to your past, you will be able to fight them. Hallelujah. Dominion over curses. Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, it says, Christ has made, has redeemed us from the curses of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hung on the tree. The one who hung on the tree for us was Christ. He paid a price for us once and for all. You don't have to, you know, you know, you know slaughter any animal, you know, to compensate or pacify any kind of God. Jesus Christ has done it once and for all. But you see, the most important thing that you need to know is when the man of God or the woman of God understands that God has broken the curse, that is where your victory comes. Many people are so much ignorant and also so much, you know, you know, you know, you know, have been, they, 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 they have never known or understood what is going on in their lives. And the enemy has found a way to really hide a lot of things from them, even in their own backgrounds. And that's why they are so much, you know, ignorant about many things that have gone on in their time or in their lives. Curses. I pray that God will give you a revelation through at least 21 days about particular curses that are prevailing in your background. Oh, hallelujah. In the altar that have been raised, by which a custodian has been appointed in the realm of the Spirit, that is sick, constantly, you know, pestering and, and doing certain things against you. May the Lord give you revelation. Listen to me, the reason why I said you are a watchman is that you are going to be empowered to break it in Jesus' name. I said you are going to be empowered to break it in Jesus' name. I told you I was going to use the, you know, the life of, of, of 
Gideon. Gideon was given the power. There were so many things that were was going on in the life of Gideon. Gideon had to deal with not just things that were happening in his life, but it was a national issue. It was a national issue. And God gave him the power to be able to deal with it. You know, the story of Gideon took place, you know, in a quarter along the way, long ago. They were, they, were, they were a quarter that they were supposed to have served the Lord. God has saved them from many things and from many things. And you did not have a Do not have any other God before me. But by way of hard heartedness, callousness, they were able, they could not obey the simple word that God gave to them. And therefore, you know, as Moses led them out of Egypt, after 40 years of wandering in the desert, you know, Joshua led them into the promised land. God has given them everything that they need. Listen to me. There are so many people that God has given you everything that you need. But then, probably, there are certain things that you're supposed to do that you haven't done. And that has resurrected certain curses that are prevailing, that are hanging around your life and in your, in, in, in your family. Listen to me. You can resurrect certain spirits that is prevailing in your background. That's why a child of God must consistently deal with powers that are con- that are trying to control, that are trying to fight them. You must guard against so many things that the enemy has brought around you. You need to be very carefully. You must stay by protecting your territory by prayer. Many times, the Bible says that we can look for. It says, when the enemy left, he left for a season. He left for a season. Which means he was going to look for another opportune time. The devil is not resting. So, do not let a child of God rest. Do not let a child of God rest because the devil is not resting. Why should we pray? Somebody asked me a question, the pastor. Why is it that we must ban the devil all the time? Listen to me. You must live constantly knowing who you are, understanding what God has called us to do. We are in a constant spiritual warfare against powers there be. We have what we call territorial powers, environmental powers, spiritual powers. These are all spiritual powers. But we have also personal spirit, household powers that will fight against you. All that they do is that they don't want you to advance. They don't want you to do things and, and advance and receive certain things. It happened in the life of the Israelites. The Bible says because of that, the Midianites came and gave them and they, and, and, and they really pressurized them and brought them under a serious attack. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, God against evil. That's why we must also guard against our heart things. I would say, Pastor, I've never done anything evil physically, but do you know how things are very dangerous? There are a lot of complications that we go through spiritually because of certain things that we allow to pass through our hearts. You do not verbalize it, you do not say anything about it. But just a mere thought, thinking about it and allowing the enemy to bring evil into your heart can open up a lot of doors. But the enemy needs to come against you. You must be very careful. Praise the name of the living God. God again to have Bible says we should, you know, circumcise our heart. Circumcision of the heart is not a war of the flesh. Which means take away all the filth out of your heart. Because that is where we have issues of life. There are lots of things that do happen in the heart. And therefore, we must gather this and clean the place and allow God to stay there. Hallelujah. Oh, I pray that there will be no curses that will hang around your head. May you receive the power as a watchman to break every curse in your family. Any custodian that has been appointed against you, may the Lord bring that custodian under control. I ask you pray, may the Lord give you power. Listen to me. The Bible says when the Midianites caught the Israelites, God prepared the man. For the people. You see, when Gideon met the Lord, the Lord did not say, ah, somebody's going to fight for you. He says, I'll make you a mighty man of valor. Go is the power that I've given to you. So you are the one that God will appoint, anoint, and ordain to do this 
righteousness on behalf of Jehovah God. Hallelujah. Spiritually, you are strong. Spiritually, God is going to empower you. He's going to anoint you. He's going to give you everything that you need to be able to fight the enemy. May you receive that power in Jesus' name. Number three thing that we're going to pray about is dominion over poverty. Poverty. You can never live in lack forever. I pray that anything that has been stolen from you shall be returned. I say anything that has been stolen from you by way of finances, by way of blessing, by way of prosperity, by way of anything that has been stolen, anything that has been stolen from you, may the Lord restore them in Jesus' name. Dominion over poverty. Anything that seems to dominate you and seems to introduce poverty into your life, may the Lord take care of it. Amen. I'm talking about scarcity and excessive lack. Deficiencies in your life. I pray that Jehovah will take hold of them and bring them under control. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 20, 20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, so that shall be established. Just believe in, in, in his prophet, you and you shall prosper. Amen. I say amen. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. You need faith in the Lord to be established. May Jehovah establish you. By way of prophecy, by way of receiving the word of God from the prophets of God, by way, not just a way of word of prophecy, that says that says the Lord, no, by the, the word prophet, which is the, 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 the spoken word that comes, and the written word that you read, may Jehovah give you power over your poverty and your deficiencies. Or oh, praise the name of the Lord. Listen to me, beloved, there is some kind of power that God has put in the reading of the Word, in the study of the Word of God. If you study the Word of God and you believe it, something will follow. May that Spirit follow you in Jesus' name. May that prosperity follow you because you love the Word. Therefore, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. But it says, believe in His prophet and you shall prosper. I brought a prophesy prosperity over your life in the name of Jesus. Prosperity in every aspect of your life, not only on finances, but may you prosper in everything that you do. In fact, prosperity in your vision, prosperity according to your purpose, prosperity in your priorities, may Jehovah give you power to prosper in Jesus' name. I say in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5. Yes, as long as you serve the Lord, God made him to prosper. Mm. As long as you serve the Lord, as long as you are going to seek the Lord, he will cause you to prosper. Prosperity will fail you. Prosperity shall follow you. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. I pronounce that God is bringing you out of your poverty, out of your deficiencies, out of your darkness. Out of your scarcity, Jehovah is bringing you out. Come on, I say Jehovah is bringing you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight we are going to pray. In the scarcity in your life, we break it in Jesus' name. Anything that has brought a sense of blackness in your life, may the Lord break it in Jesus' name. Anything that the enemy has brought against you in the way of, of, of poverty, may you prosper in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four thing that we're going to pray about is over sickness, dominion over sickness. Sickness cannot take you and incarcerate you, put you in a prison. It will not dominate your life and destroy you. Come on, if you are going through some kind of sickness, there is nothing that you can do. Come on, you rise up and you want to really do something and you can't do it. You know, sickness has really put people and people have abandoned their business because of sickness. May you rise up from your footbed in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 103 verse 3 says, Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. May Jehovah heal all your diseases. I say may Jehovah heal all your diseases. Every disease that seems to be taking things from your life, every kind of sickness that is robbing your life, everything that is robbing your, your, your joy and your happiness, may Jehovah break it in Jesus' name. May the Lord break it in Jesus' name. Come on, may you rise up to that newness of the power of Jehovah. May you, be, you know, may, may you receive the, the blessings of God. May you receive the healings of God. May the Lord bring you wholeness. May the Lord put you in a place where when you rise up and begin to do something, you shall see the glory of God. Sickness can never dominate your life. 
anymore. Diseases can never rob you anymore. May you receive your healing in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. He says, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of thy God and will do what is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep off his statutes, he says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee and, and which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Let me read it again. I love it, beloved. He says, If thou would diligently hearken to the voice of thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, he says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I said, I am the Lord that he let me. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. May Jehovah heal you. I said, may Jehovah give you healing. May the Lord take away all sicknesses and diseases from your life. And the infirmity that seems to be robbing your life, may Jehovah take it away from you. Oh, I pray that God will help you and take that sickness away from you. There are silent sicknesses that seem to rob us that we can never even look at. There are a lot of major diseases that seem to take away many, many things from us. But tonight, I pray for a restoration. I say, I pray for restoration. May Jehovah restore your health back to you. The joy that has been taken and robbed from you or stolen from you, may Jehovah restore that joy back to you. May the Lord break away every spirit of sickness, any cancer, any hypertension, any diabetes, anything at all that the enemy seems to have brought against you. May Jehovah you know, give you healing right now. I say, may Jehovah heal you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the last thing that we're going to pray about is dominion over fear. You can never live in fear anymore. Psalm 23, verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There are some people who have a problem, go through a lot of things in the area of fear of death. Complications, not do sicknesses, but certain voices that speak to them about death. I break that evil voice from your life in Jesus' name. There are people who wake up in the morning and they begin to think as if they are going to go down and die. Beloved, it's of the devil. Bible says in some 118 verse 17, it says, You will not die, but you shall live and declare the good things of God. You are not going to die. Bible says, with long life will I satisfy you. Oh, praise the name of the living God. With long life will the Lord satisfy you. God will cause you to live long. Oh, I pray that you will live and at the time of your of your going, you will say, God, I am tired of living. Take me home. May the Lord give you everything that you need to be able to survive the life that God has given to us. May you never be taken home before your time. In the time sensitive curse that seems to throw you, seems to rob you, I curse that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that has been put in your family that takes people before their time, in the sickness that takes people before their time, I curse that sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. It is called generational curse, generational disease. I curse it in the name of Jesus. I break that spirit in the name of Jesus. Verse Psalm 27, verse number 2. Psalm number 27, verse number 2. He says, The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? If the enemy will come against me and try to pursue me. Bible says, He shall stumble and He shall fall. I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus that tonight in the spirit, call spirit of fear, dominion of fear, that seems to throw you. May the Lord kill it in Jesus' name. May the Lord destroy it in Jesus' name. Oh, praise the name of the living God. May any enemy of fear that seeks to destroy, seeks to destroy you, seeks to come against you, may they stumble, may they fall in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything at all that seems, Lord, oh, has been released by the enemy that seems to follow you and try to eat your flesh, may the Lord destroy you. Do you know we have this level of fear that when you wake up, it 
robs you of your joy. It will never let you do the things that you are supposed to do. May Jehovah give you the power to live for the Lord. May you, when you lift your hands in worship, may you enjoy your worship. When you lift your hands in praise, may you enjoy your praise. May the Lord put some songs in your mouth. As you sing these songs, may Jehovah Lord, take away everything that seems to rob you. May the Lord break away from every power. May the Lord break every spirit that seems to grip you. May you receive your joy. May you receive your deliverance. May the Lord give you everything that you need. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. For in this fasting and prayer, I pray that God will do a great work in your life. Come on, Bible tells us that when Gideon saw what was going on, he went to God. He went to God. You see, let's read the book of Judges, chapter number six. Bible says that God, the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hands of the living man for, for seven years. Why seven years? So long as you continue to do the things that are against the Lord, the enemy will put you in a prison. You'll be incarcerated spiritually because of the fact that you are not doing what God wants you to do. Bible says, verse number two, and the hand of the Midianites prevail against the Israelites. May I pray that no hand of evil will prevail against you. Over here, because of the fact that they did not just, you know, serve other gods, but they did not serve the, the living God. Listen to me. They did not just introduce in the spirit. They brought in Asherah pole. They brought in other gods that they were serving. And they abandoned the service that they needed to give unto God. Two things. They abandoned worshiping of the living God and decided that they introduced other gods into their lives. Listen to me. There are so many people, after the Lord has blessed them, they don't seem to take God serious anymore. Listen to me. I pray that them that are serving the Lord from the bottom of their heart, these are genuine people that are serving the Lord those who have given their whole heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God will show you favor. I pray that the hand of God shall be released upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I pray and press every hand of Midian that will seem to follow you, that will seem to come against you. We will never allow any spirit to prevail upon you. I cast those spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the living God. He says, because of Midian, the Israelites made themselves the dens which are in the mountains and the caves that are in the jungle. Listen to me. You will not run away. You will enjoy what God has given to you. Because of fear of your enemies, you will begin to do things that you are not supposed to do. May it never happen to you. I pray that there will be a deliverance in your life. That God will, will cause some deliverance and will bring you out in a finest way, in a beautiful way. May you prevail over your enemies. Rather, the enemies cannot prevail over you. You will come out from every closet, every spirit that seems to have bound you. May you break free from it in the mighty name of Jesus. One of the things that God, I believe, is going to do within these 21 days is that those who are bound by the devil are going to go free. Those who are oppressed by the enemy, the Lord will set them free. Those who are suppressed by the devil, those who are so much confused in life, in their minds, may Jehovah release you from your, your predicament in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, praise the name of the living God. The three says that whenever Israel had sown their seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came against them. Listen to me. You will sow and you will enjoy what you are sowing. You will work and you will enjoy whatever you are working for. Praise the name of the living God. Every seed that you are going to receive in the form of a salary, you shall enjoy your money in the mighty name of Jesus. I see people telling me, Pastor, I don't know what I do with my money. You will know what to do with your money. Whatever you fought for, you will not spend it on your health issues. You will not spend it in any way, way or anyhow. You will spend it very in a, in a very you know, good way. You, it will not be wasted upon anything that has been brought against you by the enemy, especially in the way of sickness. But rather, God will give you the power to manage what he has given to you. May you receive that anointing. I say, may you receive that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Any Amalekite, any Midianite, that seems to have brought bolt holes in your, in your pocket or, or bolt holes in your hands, that seems to be eating from your hand in the midnight hour. I cast them to the core in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Verse 4 says they would encamp against them and destroy the crops as far as Gaza and leave no nourishment for Israel and no ox or sheep. Anything that has been stolen, they shall swallow it back. I say anything that has been stolen from you, Jehovah will give them, you give you the power in your prayer. The enemy will swallow all of them and, and he will vomit all of them. Anything that has been swallowed, God will give them power to vomit all of them for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that anything that has been stolen, anything that has been swallowed, the Lord will give them power. God will give you power in your prayer that everything that has been stolen from you, they shall vomit them to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Bible tells us that anything that the enemy has swallowed, he shall vomit them. May that devil vomit every blessing that has been taken away. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say, in the mighty name of Jesus, by the force for they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came like locusts from multitude, both they and their cattle could not be counted. So they wasted the land as they entered it. The enemies are too numerous. But the Lord will give you power. I said the Lord will give you power. But six says an Israelite was greatly impoverished. Can you imagine? They were suppressed. They were brought to a place where every little thing was taken away from them. But God gave them power. Listen to this. They were impoverished. They were, they were reduced to nothing but poverty. But the Lord, because the Israelites and the Israelites cried unto the Lord, that's the secret. Because they cried unto the Lord, what happened to seven? And when they cried to the Lord because of the Midianites, and the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites who said to them, That say the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out to the hand of the Egyptians. And out of the hand of all who oppressed you, and drove them out before you, and gave you you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed me. It will never be your story. You shall obey the Lord. You see, the reason why the Israelites went through that was that God saved them and gave them the goodies of their enemies. God gave them everything that they needed, the essence of their enemies, but they refused to serve the Lord. You will never refuse to serve the Lord. I came to prophesy over you as you keep serving the Lord. Something good is going to happen to you. I said, something good is going to happen to you. He says, I delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians. Every enemy God has given you deliverance from, you will never put yourself under them anymore. In the meantime, that way, that was was trying that way. They were trying to suppress you. God brought you out. You will not bring yourself under them anymore. May the Lord give you that strength, that grace, that power to be able to live for Him in the mighty name of Jesus. I say in the mighty name of Jesus. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the God of the Amorites. And the angel of the Lord came and under the oak tree of, of Tabernacle at Oprah that belonged to Joash the Abishai. And his son Gideon was beaten him in the one place to hide it from the Midianites. You see, the case was so complicated. It was so serious. In that a young man who did not know anything, even decided to hide the things that he was supposed to do. He was trying to find some food for himself, take up for the family. And so he hid the little moss, the little you know, cereal that he was trying to you know, you know, work on to be able to prepare for food in a tree. We don't, we don't, we don't, you know, take care of grain in a wine press. The wine press are meant for wine, for grapes. And because of fear, they have to hide in case. You are coming out in Jesus by today. You will not hide from your enemies anymore. Oh, praise the name of the living God. Who, whoever, wherever you are, a prophesy over your life that the Lord is going to give you the power to be able to live for Him. You will not run away from your enemies anymore. But rather you are coming out. Somebody shout out, I'm coming out. You are coming out not because of your power. It's not by my God, by power. It's by my spirit, say the Lord. So God is going to empower you. God is going to really give you everything that you need to be able to take your stand. You shall take your stand. I say you shall take your stand in the mighty name of Jesus. And Bible, let me just quickly go through this and we are done. And Bible says, the angel of the Lord came under the tree, the fall, and said, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you. So 
some of us, the many problems that we have gone through, as a man of God or a brother or a sister in the body of Christ, we look at you and say that the Lord is with you. If you don't take care of the question that will come out of your mouth, or the answer will be that if the Lord is with us, why all these troubles? That's exactly what Gideon said. If the Lord is with me, why are all these troubles? How did we fight? How did we head all the wondrous works of which our fathers told us? Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Now the Lord has forsaken us and given us unto the band of Midian. God will never abandon his own. Sin will, will plunge you into chaos and bring you under bondage. May you never be overtaken by the sins of this world. In that you will be plunged into a situation where you will never pray and God will even hear you. May it never happen to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the living God. To cut a long story short, the Bible says the Lord spoke to him and gave him a word. I have made you a man of the Lord. Gideon said to him, O oh Lord, how can I believe in Israel? Let me go by 14. And the Lord said to him and said, Go in this your mind. What is the mind that you are talking about? The longing to see deliverance come to his family and come to the nation. The longing to see healing come to you. The longing to see that God will break through for you. The Lord said, because of that thing that you have in your heart, the might, the strength, the power that you have really released through prayer, it comes through prayer. If a man or a woman do not pray, you are powerless. Your power is hidden in the, in the prayer that you offer before the Lord. In these 21 days of seeking the face of God, may you be empowered to seek His face. May you be empowered to pray. You have been ordained to bring deliverance to your people. Listen to me, you who is hearing the sound of my voice. Those who are hearing the sound of my voice, listen to me. The very longing that you have in your heart, the quest and the desire to see deliverance come to you, come to your family, that is where your power is. That is what is going to lead you to a place of prayer. Because of what you have in your heart, it will take you before the altar where you will call upon the name of the Lord and the Lord will hear you. This young man, Gideon, had a longing in his heart. He has brought, been brought into a situation. None of his fault. He wasn't the one who caused the problem. It was the master problem. And he's brought himself into it. But the Lord saw his heart. Why? Because he had a desire seeking the face of God. Oh, it was like David who appeared on the field and saw a man cursing the people of God, defying the the strong and the strength of Israel, defying the armies of Israel. He said, who is this uncircumcised man that is defying the ranks of Israel? The quest in the young man's heart brought him to face the giant. Let me tell you, beloved, the quest in the desire and the longing in your heart is going to bring you a breakthrough. That is where your breakthrough is. You are going to make it. I say you are going to make it. I say you are going to receive your healing. The reason is this joy in the prayer, joy in the fasting, the longing that you have in your heart to see a transformation. That is what is going to bring you a total transformation. The longing in your heart to see healing, healing shall come to you. The longing in your heart to see deliverance, deliverance shall come to you. Why? Because that is where the heart of the Lord is. May you receive your healing tonight. 
in the name of Jesus. And when the Lord saw that, the Lord said to him, Go in this your longing, in this your might, in this your power, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Lord. Have I not sent you? Gideon said to him, O Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Behold, my plan is the poorest in Manasseh. I am the least of my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man, not as two people. You don't need anybody. You need Christ. I will be with you. Come on, Jehovah will be with you. Whatever has been your vision, whatever you want to accomplish, dream big. Dream big. Because when the Lord puts a vision in your heart, it means you can make it. If you begin to envision something big in this life, that will benefit the kingdom, that will benefit many people, and you want to bring it to pass, it's a sign that God has called you, God has appointed you, God has ordained you for an accomplishment. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, for the glory of the Lord shall risen upon thee. Arise and shine. Somebody is arising right now. Somebody is coming out of obscurity. You are being pushed to, uh, to the front. God is, has empowered that has prepared you. He's bringing you to the front line, and you are going to do the battle. This young man from the back did not know, how can I do that? I have nephews, I have uncles, I have aunties, I have big me, I have our leaders. Why is the Lord appointing me, appointing me as a young man? I've been appointed as a young, naive person. But the Lord saw him and saw the heart. May the Lord see your heart. What is important tonight is where your heart is. If your heart is after the Lord, I want to prophesy and I want to assure you that God who sees your heart is going to honor you and reward you because the Lord sees your heart. If your heart is after righteousness, the Lord will be with you and cause blessings to flow unto you. May you receive the favor of God. May you receive the righteousness of God. May you receive the empowerment of God. You shall make it. Come on, you shall make it. I say you shall make it. Oh, Gideon was asked to go. It doesn't matter what was going on. God gave him the power. God gave him the mandate. He gave him everything that he needed to be able to go. Oh, Gideon said to him, if I have now found favor in your sight, show me a sign that you who is talking to me, a sign will be given. Oh, I came to let you know that even from tonight, may the Lord give you a sign. May the Lord give you a sign for you to know. Oh, praise the name of the living God. The God that we serve is, uh, is, is real. I said the Lord that we serve exists. This God that we have been serving throughout our lives is so real. And he will give you a sign. Somebody said, Lord, give me a sign. Lord, give me a sign. Not for you to know who he is. No, no, no. For you to be able to follow the sign and know that God is leading you in a particular direction. All of us here believe and know that God exists. God is real. But whether there is a physical sign or not, God will do it anyway. Why? The sign is that I believe in the Lord in all with all my heart. I have never done God wrong. God has never done me any wrong. God has never disappointed me. Come on, you can look back in the past and you have really, you know, a point or this point a sign that God has given to you before. Come on, fix your past, past testimonies and see a sign that God has already given to you. Has He not been able to heal you before? Has there not God provided for you before? At the time that you have luck and you don't know where something was going to come from, God let somebody come in and the Lord allowed somebody to give you something. At the time in North Carolina, I had nothing. We woke up in the morning. That morning we have prayed and I will ask the Lord. I said, Lord, today we don't have anything. About 9 a.m., somebody came knocking at our door. And the person just said that the Lord asked us to bring you this envelope. Listen to me. I have seen the sign of God. God can give you a sign. And if God gives you a sign, it's an indication that God is real. It's an indication that everything that you are doing, God is interested in it. It's an indication that God is very close to you. May you receive the closeness of God. May you receive the presence of God all over you. You are a mighty man of valor. Somebody talk with me. I am a mighty man of valor. I am a mighty man of valor. Somebody talk with me. God will use me. And I'm available. 
Say, God will give me a sign, and I shall break every power. I shall break every power. I shall break every demonic post that have been put there against me in the mighty name of Jesus.